I want to demonstrate something. When we got saved, this is us. We got saved. Let's say this is Christ. We are in Christ. When we got saved, we became new creatures in Christ. So his experiences became our experiences. When Jesus died on the cross, he didn't just die for us. He died as us. He didn't just die for us, he died as us. So when he died, he was a substitute for us. He took our place. So what he went through was like, he took the punishment we should have gotten. He took the full brunt of the punishment so that we wouldn't have to take it. He was forsaken by his father on the cross. God forsook his son so that he would never have to forsake you. You are a new creature in Christ Jesus. Condemnation kills. Condemnation kills. And the Bible says here that there is therefore no condemnation. Why? Because you are in Christ Jesus. There is no condemnation. You don't have to look at yourself and feel like you are unfit for God's use. Like feel like you are unfit for the kingdom. God paid a precious price for you. God thought you were worth dying for. Your creator thought you were worth dying for. Don't look at yourself as worthless. You are precious in his eyes. You are valuable to him. Have you heard of Loke Christian Bookstores? It's a mega Christian resource center in Abuja, which specializes in wholesale and retailing of Bibles and Christian books, motivationals, self-development, business and management books, music, gifts, novels, children books, and lots more. You can also pick up your audio and video tapes, CDs, DVDs, and VCDs. Visit us at our head office. Suit A12 and 13, Ground Floor, Rochas Plaza by Tantalizers, Wu Season 3, Telephone 080-3663-080-366-07897. Okay, let's go to Colossians chapter 1. Colossians chapter 1, verse 13, 13 to 14. He has delivered us. That's Jesus. He has delivered us from the power of darkness and conveyed us into the kingdom of the son of his love. In whom, that's in Christ, in Christ we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of sins. I want to read that in the Amplified. In whom? That's in Christ. Oh, okay, 13. The Father has delivered and drawn us to himself out of the control and dominion of darkness and has transferred us into the kingdom of the Son of his love. In whom we have our redemption through his blood, which means the forgiveness of our sins. Why would you be condemned then? Why? Why would you feel condemned? Why would you let condemnation have dominion over you when it says here, we have been redeemed and we have forgiveness of sins? Amen? It doesn't say we're going to have redemption or we're going to have forgiveness of sins. It says we already have redemption and forgiveness of sins has been made available to us through Jesus' finished work. When he cried out, finished on the cross, your redemption was one of the things he took care of. Your healing was one of the things he took care of. A lot of things. You know, the Bible says he has given us everything that pertains to life and godliness. Everything that pertains to life and godliness. If it's healing you need, if it's mental stability, if it's you don't want to be ruled by your emotions, whatever it is you need, Jesus already took care of it. So all you have to do is receive it. That's how you accept a gift. You don't work for a gift. That's the whole point. That's the definition of a gift. It's something you don't deserve. You just say, I take it. Thank you. Receive it and say thank you. Amen? Amen? We don't need to be condemned. We need to be righteousness conscious, not sin conscious. We need to be righteousness conscious, not sin conscious. When you are righteousness conscious, it is difficult for the enemy to condemn you or try to condemn you because you're conscious of who you are in Christ. You're not conscious of yourself outside of Christ. You are conscious of Christ in you, the hope of glory. Christ in you, your redeemer. Christ in you, your savior. Christ in you. In you, your healer. So you don't have to look at your, your shortcomings. 
You don't have to be self-occupied, be Christ-occupied. Don't be self-occupied, be Christ-occupied. Don't be introspective, looking at yourself, examining yourself for, for your flaws, your shortcomings, your mistakes, and things of that nature. You don't have to look to yourself. You have to look at Christ. You have to look at Christ in you. Because when God looks at you, he doesn't see you in you. He, does, he sees you in Christ. He sees you in Christ Jesus. Because you are a new creature. He doesn't see you in yourself. He doesn't see you outside of Christ. He doesn't look at your ability, your, your shortcomings, your flaws. He looks at Christ in you. What's really sad is, you know, most Christians are more conscious of the old man and the sin nature than they are of Christ. They are more conscious of the old man and the sin nature than they are being engrafted in Christ. And like I said last week, engrafted is joined. So they are more conscious of that than they are of who they are. And that, that shouldn't be, it really shouldn't be. Because like I said, when you know who you are, when you know who you are in Christ, your behavior will change. God is not looking for behavior modification. He is looking for a heart transformation. He's not looking for behavior modification. You know, a lot of Christians um, modify their behavior and then, you know, they, they, they have oh, everything outward. Everything outwardly looks good. It looks, you know, oh, this is a legitimate Christian. But inside, there is no change. There is no transformation. So God is not looking for behavior modification. He's looking for heart transformation. Because true change starts from within. And when you are transformed from the inside, then it's going to become evident outside. Amen? Amen. The enemy is terrified. He is terrified of Christians who know who they are in Christ. Who know their rights in Christ. This is why I want everyone here to be that kind of Christian. The kind of Christian that terrifies the enemy. Do you want to be that kind of Christian? Yes. Amen. I want to be that kind of Christian. You want to wake up in the morning the enemy is like, what, 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 is, what is he going to do today? She's, what is he going to do today? And then he's, that's what I want. I want the enemy to panic every time I wake up. Amen. Panic. Amen. Amen. Let's go to Romans chapter 5, verse 17. Are we all there? Okay. So Romans 5, 17 says, For if by the one man's offense, death reigned through the one, much more those who receive the abundance of grace and of the gift of righteousness will reign in life through the one Jesus Christ. If by one man's offense, that's Adam, Adam's disobedience, Adam's treason against God caused death to reign. Much more, much more, much more, those who receive the abundance of grace and of the gift of righteousness will reign in life through the one Jesus Christ. Let's read this in the Amplified, please. For if because of one man's trespass, lapse, offense, death reigned through that one, much more surely, much more surely will those who receive God's overflowing grace, God's overflowing grace, unmerited favor, and the gift of righteousness, putting them into right standing with himself, Reign as kings in life through the one man, Jesus Christ, the Messiah, the anointed one. <laughs> wow. It says we'll reign in life. Do you know who reigns? Kings. It says we will reign in life through Jesus Christ. Kings reign. We are a royal priesthood. We are a royal priesthood. And the thing is, when... You reign in life through Jesus Christ. Your addictions don't reign. When you reign in life through Jesus Christ, sin has no dominion over you. When you reign in life through Jesus Christ, anger doesn't, emotions don't. <laughs> this is powerful. Emotion, em emotions don't reign over you. You don't just go crazy. You don't go berserk. You don't just lose it. Because you're reigning in life through Jesus Christ. Not in yourself, not through yourself, not because of yourself, but because of your own merit or your own strengths. 
but because of Jesus Christ and through Jesus Christ and because you are in him. Hallelujah. Praise God. Hallelujah. When you reign in life, lack doesn't reign. Poverty doesn't reign. Hallelujah. It doesn't. You reign in life through Jesus over every difficulty, over every storm. Now, I'm not going to, stick, I'm not going to stand here and tell you though, there won't be storms. There won't be challenges because there will be. There will be. This is not a perfect world. There will be storms. There will be attacks of the enemy. But you need to stand on who you are in Christ. You need to stand your ground and say, I am in Christ Jesus. I will not be moved. I am in Christ. <laughs> Praise God. So the storms might come, the challenges might come, you know, opposition might come, attacks might come. But guess what? You win. Hallelujah. You win. Hallelujah. Okay, Second Peter chapter one, verse three. Okay, let me start from number two. Grace and peace be multiplied to you in the knowledge of God and of Jesus our Lord. As his divine power has given to us all things that pertain to life and godliness through the knowledge of him who called us by glory and virtue. <laughs> As his divine power has given to us all things that pertain to life and godliness through the knowledge of him who called us by his glory and virtue. So everything you need to live life here on earth, everything you could possibly need has been made available. The Bible says he has given us everything that pertains to life and godliness. Everything you need to live a godly life has been made available to you. You are the righteousness of God in Christ. Amen? So righteousness was a gift given to you. Healing was a gift purchased at the cross. Your righteousness was a gift purchased at the cross. Your prosperity was a gift purchased at the cross. Praise God. Okay. How do we appropriate who we are? How? How do we appropriate who we are? Let's go to Philemon verse 6. Philemon verse 6. That the sharing of your faith may become effective by the acknowledgement of every good thing which is in you in Christ Jesus. <laughs> that the sharing of your faith, some, ver uh, some versions say that the communication of your faith become effective. Or let me say, by, um, that the release, the release of your faith become effective by acknowledging all the good things that are in you, where? In Christ Jesus. Amen? Now, to acknowledge means to admit the existence of a thing. To acknowledge means to admit the existence of a thing. If you're in court and you admit to something, you're saying it exists. I admit that I did so and so. I admit you are admitting, you are acknowledging something that exists. Amen? Uh, or the word confess. Confess means to say the same thing. So you need to confess your identity in Christ. Say the same thing that God says about who you are. Say the same thing that God says about who you are. So don't acknowledge your faults. Don't acknowledge your mistakes. I'm not saying, I'm not saying don't look to God to work on you. Don't look to God to change you. But what I'm saying is don't become so introspective and so self-occupied that you forget completely about Christ in you. You com forget completely about all the gifts and all the things that he has made available to you to live a life, a godly life. Amen? Amen. Romans chapter 12 verse 2. It says, and do not be conformed to this world but be transformed by the renewing of your mind that you may prove what is the good and acceptable and perfect will of God. And do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind that you may prove what is the good and acceptable and perfect will of God. <laughs> How do you prove what is the good and acceptable and perfect will of God? You renew your mind. 
that is how you prove that is how your life becomes a reflection of the good acceptable and perfect will of God you have to renew your mind so that when other people see you they wonder what it is you have that they don't have good acceptable and perfect will of God this will be made manifest in you this will become evident this will become apparent this will become obvious in you after you renew your mind after you begin to renew your mind amen, amen. renewing your mind is not a one-time event it is a lifelong practice renewing your mind is not a one-time event it is a lifelong practice no matter how mature you are spiritually you have to continue renewing your mind amen, amen. let God change the way you think by getting in the word that's the only way God can change the way you think because if you don't get in the word and God tries to change the way you think it's like he's competing with the world for your mind okay so it's like he's competing with the world for your mind and you know the world and God is a gentleman you have to yield you have to yield you have to consent to have him change the way you think by getting in the word amen, amen. praise God let's read the amplified version of this Romans 12 2 do not be conformed to this world this age fashion after and adapted to its external superficial customs but be transformed changed by the entire renewal of your mind by its new ideals and its new attitude so that you may prove for yourselves what is the good and acceptable and perfect will of God even the thing which is good and acceptable and perfect in his sight for you okay um it is only by renewing your mind that god's will is seen in your life and that is you know a lot of people are thinking about what does god want me to do what is his will for my life what is his plan for my life what are his purposes you have to get in the word because getting in the word sharpens your hearing to receive from god and for him to change things that are not right in your thinking to change things that are not right in your attitude change things that are not right in your behavior by renewing your mind by renewing it doesn't say renew your mind one time and you know everything will be all right you know God is going to uh, make the changes in your life when you renew your mind one time it is a con inconsistency lies the power inconsistency lies the power by the renewing renewing of your mind renewing of your mind amen? amen now if someone asks you asks you for um, proof of your identity what are they asking you for they're asking you for your identity card they're asking you for maybe your driver's license your passport they're asking you for documentation in black and white that you are who you say you are they're asking for proof you, okay, your name is so-and-so. Can I see some identification? They're asking for black and white proof that you are so-and-so person. So our proof that we are in Christ, our proof that we are new creations in Christ Jesus, it's right here. It's right here in black and white. This is your identification card. This is your passport. This is proof that you are the righteousness of God in Christ. This is proof that you are a new creature in Christ Jesus. This is proof that you have access to healing, access to deliverance, access to peace, access to preservation, access to safety, access to salvation. Praise God. This is your proof. This is your identification card. Amen. I think it was the message. Uh, was it the message? The message version of this verse. I think it's this verse. It says, fix your attention on God and you will be changed from the inside out. Wow. That's very simple, isn't it? Sounds very simple. Fix your attention on God. When things are going crazy in your life, fix your attention on God and you will be changed from the inside out. 
That is true change from the inside out. True change is from the inside out. 2 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 18. But we all, with unveiled face, beholding as in the mirror, the glory of the Lord are being transformed into the same image. <laughs> but we all, with unveiled face, beholding as in a mirror, the glory of the Lord are being transformed into the same image. What image? The glory of the Lord. Yes, 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 yes. Just as by the Spirit of the Lord. Let's read that in Amplified, please. And all of us in Eagle Christian Center, Amen. as with unveiled face, because we continue to behold in the Word of God, as in a mirror, the glory of the Lord, the presence of God, the goodness of God, Amen. the power of God. Amen are constantly being transfigured or transformed into his very own image in ever-increasing splendor and from one degree of glory to another. For this comes from the Lord who is the Spirit. It is by beholding. Or like it says here, we continue to behold. We continued to behold. We consistently continue to behold. Like I said, in consistency lies the power. In consistency lies the power. You don't behold Jesus in the Word today or His glory, and then walk away. And then you know, I've done my, I've done my, I've done my renewing for today. I've done my renewing for the week. That's not the way it works. That's not the way it works. You continue to behold. God knows there are so many distractions. There are so many distractions from trying to behold him. And that's why he says continue. Continue to behold till it takes root in your heart. Continue to behold till the truth of who you are takes root in your heart. In the Bible, you know, people always quote this verse, um, the truth will set you free. That's not correct. The Bible says you will know the truth. You will know the truth and the truth will set you free. It is the truth you know that will set you free. It is the truth you know. If the truth is in your Bible and you keep your Bible on your table, you only open your Bible on Sundays, the truth will not and cannot set you free. As powerful as this truth is, you have to know it personally. You have to know it for yourself before it can set you free. If your neighbor knows the word of God, they know the truth. And the truth is changing their lives. And then you feel like you know the truth. Why isn't it working for me? It's probably because you haven't been beholding Jesus. You haven't been looking at Christ in you. You've been looking at other things. You've been looking at your circumstances. You've been looking at the sickness in your body. <laughs> you need to acknowledge who you are in Christ. So while you renew your mind, you're acknowledging, you're speaking it out loud. So when things go crazy, you say, I am in Christ. I'm righteous because I'm in Christ. I am not going to be defeated because I'm in Christ. I'm not going to die of cancer. I'm not going to die of disease because I'm in Christ. Amen? Amen. I have safety because I'm in Christ. I do, not, I do not live in lack. I do not live in poverty because I am in Christ. Amen? Amen. Praise God. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. This is how far we can go on this program today. It is not because we are out of message, we are only out of time. We are sure you have been blessed on this program today. If you are not born again, you need to get born again. You need to get into Christ. You need to get into being in Christ. You need to accept the gift of salvation. How do they get born again, Dora? All you have to do is say this and mean it with your heart. Amen. Say it from your heart. Amen. After me. Lord Jesus, Lord Jesus, I believe, I believe that you are the Son of God, that you are the Son of God, and that you died for me, and that you died for me. Lord Jesus, Lord Jesus, be my Lord, be my Lord, be my Savior, be my Savior. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Amen. You Amen. said that prayer, you are saved. Amen. It's as simple as that. It is a finished work. Mm -hmm. It is a gift. Yes. You just accept it. You receive it by faith. Amen. You accept it. The gift of salvation by faith. Now, healing is also part of the package. It is a package. There are things the Bible says accompany salvation. Healing and health is one of them. So if you are sick in your body, 
and you want to be made whole, she will pray for you. In the name of Jesus, I speak to the sickness, I speak to the symptoms, I speak to the disease in your body, and I command you to be healed. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 It's done. It's as simple as that. Because it is not about your effort. Your works of righteousness at getting healed. It's just a matter of simply receiving what Jesus already paid for, for you. You are healed and made whole in Jesus' name. Amen. Now, if you don't have a living church where you, you can hear the word of God the way you had it today, you need to prayerfully look for one this week. So prayerfully look for a living church where you can belong, where you can be taught the word, so that you know your rights and privileges in Christ. We'll see you next time. Until then. Bye. This is my mission, the great commission to make disciples of all Baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Teaching them the word of the Lord. Christian Christian center, voice of victory. We bring you to Jesus. We say we love you. You will never be the same again. Join Pastor and Mrs. Lotu at the Eagle Christian Center for Sunday worship service by 9 a.m. Tuesdays, Bible studies and leadership training by 6 p.m. Fridays, prayer and healing service also by 6 p.m. Then we sit A14 Ground Floor, Rochester Plaza, by Loki Christian Bookshop, with Season 3, Abuja. For further details, call 0803-965-8883 or email eaglechristiancenter at yahoo.com. Make it a date with the Lord and experience God's transformation power in your life. You will never be the same again. you've done for me your blood has set me free jesus my lord look what you've done for me.